We are now starting with the next chapter in ninth standard chemistry that is second chapter chemical changes and reactions. So we have over here chemical changes and reactions. So we are going to see over here what are the changes what takes place during a chemical reaction taking place. And what are the different kinds of reaction which are going to take place and how we can identify those different kinds of chemical reactions is what we want to learn in this particular chapter. So in the previous chapter we learned that how to uh, identify the compound, how to, how to make the symbol of a compound and then we saw how it reacts, we also saw how to balance the equation, we found out the percentage composition, the molecular mass. Now we are going to learn the different kind of reactions what takes place. So first of all, what is a chemical reaction? So a chemical reaction is a chemical change in which matter changes into a new substance or substances. So first and most important thing is a chemical reaction or a chemical change is going to be a change wherein a new substance is going to be produced. If a new substance doesn't get produced, then it is not a chemical change. A chemical change, like for example, if I am taking water and converting into ice, there is no chemical change because no new substance is formed. A new substance is formed when hydrogen oxygen reacts to form a Water, so hydrogen, oxygen ke badle water mila mujhe, new substance form hua, so that is a chemical change. So chemical change is the one which leads to a new substance or substances, okay. So first thing is that there is a change in which matter changes into a new substance. Secondly, in a chemical reaction, the substance or substances taking part in the reaction called as the reactants are transformed into one or more new substances called products. So in this case, we see reaction that the left hand side of the reaction is the reactants, right hand side the products. So a chemical reaction is the one in which the substances which are called as the reactants are going to react and give rise to substances which are called as the products or new substances called as the products. So reactants when they produce a product, then that kind of a chemical change is called as a chemical reaction. So what is the procedure of a chemical reaction? So during a chemical reaction, the existing bonds of the atoms or, moly or group of atoms of a reactants are broken and new bonds are formed resulting in the formation of new substances called products. So here, what we are seeing that suppose there are nitrogen so we know that nitrogen will be like this one nitrogen is formed like this and oxygen is going to be formed like this ye dono react karenge to yahan ka ye bond tutega aur yahan ka bond tutega aur ye dono ke beech mein bond banega so accordingly you are going to form no over here by the breaking of these bonds thus this bonds are going to be broken this bond is going to be broken and what is the, going to be the result is going to the formation of NO over here. So this is how it is going to be N2 plus O2 giving me 2NO. Got it? So this is how the nitrogen example over here was nitrogen reacting with oxygen to give you nitric oxide. So this example tells you that how the bonds, the original bond between the two nitrogen molecules was there. It is broken. So two nitrogen atoms had got the bond to form a molecule. So that bond tore diya. So ye tood gaya. Aur yahan pe oxygen ke beech mein jo bond tha, usko bhi tore diya. And this nitrogen reacts with oxygen over here and oxygen over here to give me NO. So that is how the formation takes place. So bond, the link. What is the bond? So it is a linkage or force with which X between two atoms to hold them together as a stable molecule is called a chemical bond and the concept chemical bonding. So it is going to be this way that chemi chemist in, in case of the compound or substances, they are going to be 
connected to each other the elements are connected to each other by a force of attraction between them that particular force or that particular kind of attraction between them is going to be the one which is forming a compound so the linkage or force which acts between two atoms to hold them together as a stable molecule okay not only to hold them together but also to make it as a stable molecule is called as a chemical bond and the concept is chemical bonding now the chemical reaction so how do you represent the chemical reaction so of course the chemical reaction is represented as a chemical equation we know that balance equation so that same thing we are going to represent the chemical reaction as a chemical equation so we have in shorthand form representing the result of a chemical change so there will be two substances which are as the reactants and resultant products so we have the example over here the reactants are the one which are going to be caoh twice plus 2hno3 giving me over here cano3 twice plus h2o so this example over here is in this case the bond between ca and oh was broken h and no3 was broken and accordingly this h and oh got together to form water and this ca and no3 got together to form ca no3 accordingly you can see this is the reactant and these are the products which are going to be formed so reactant reactants and products are in this particular form so left hand side right the reactants that is the substances which take part in the reaction are called as the reactants and right hand side are right the products that the uh, substances are going to be formed as a result of the reaction so in the equa word equation mein agar likhenge isko to it will be calcium hydroxide plus nitric acid giving me calcium nitrate plus water this will be the word equation this what we are return is the symbolic reaction so that is what is how you represent a chemical reaction <clears throat> so now whenever a chemical reaction takes place there will be some kind of an indication that the reaction is taking place now this could be by any of the following like it, there could be a change in the color there could be some bubbles coming out they giving me that some them some amount of gas is given out or there may be some amount of heat given out so each and every reaction may or may not it's not necessarily every time it will give me that uh, kind of indication but yes sometimes it will give so it is the chemical reaction is often accompanied by external indications or characteristics the characteristic indication accompanying a chemical reaction could be the first one is change in color so you can see here that what are the different things what can take place during a chemical reaction is there could be a change in color so first could be color change it's possible that it may happen that there is a color change taking place when there is a reaction taking place for example you know that copper nitrate which is blue in color so here it is this way that 2 cu no3 twice on heating becomes 3 2cuo plus and 4 no2 plus o2 this over here is blue in color but when it is heated it this going to become black in color so it shows that the blue has turned black so when the blue turns black we understand that the reaction has taken place accordingly we see that uh, there could be also one one lead nitrate the same thing lead nitrate becomes lead uh, lead uh, litharge that is pbo lead monoxide pbo litharge here lead nitrate is white in color whereas the litharge is yellow in color so that's why the change in color can be one of the indicator that there is a reaction taking place secondly could be a evolution of gas 
when a reaction takes place, there's a possibility that there will be bubbles coming out from that aqueous solution. That bubbles are nothing but the evolution of gas. So the gas evolved, or sometimes the gas may be in a form of a colored form. So it will be telling you that some kind of a gas is being given out. That is called as efflorescence, or we can call it just evolution of a gas. So sodium sulfide with sodium sulfuric acid is going to give me sulfur dioxide. Or we can say over here, I think even this case, you can see NO2 and O2, both are gases. These gases are going to be evolved. So evolution of a gas is a, another kind of a indication that the reaction has taken place. In this case, in fact, the color of NO2 is going to be reddish brown. So fumes can easily be seen that NO2 is being released during the reaction. So that is why we have got certain examples given over here is sodium sulfide when heated with dilute sulfuric acid gives me sul no, sodium sulfate and water and sulfur dioxide gas is going to be released. Similarly, calcium carbonate, <clears throat> it's calcium carbonate with dilute hydrochloric acid gives me calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide gas is going to be evolved by a carbonate. Similarly, ammonium chloride with calcium hydroxide gives me calcium chloride plus ammonia and water. So ammonia gas is going to be released in the third case. So gas evolved can be the next indicator. The third thing is a precipitation. There could be a possibility that the reaction of the thing will be such that after reacting, there will be one of the substance which is formed, which will be insoluble in that substance and hence it will precipitate down. It will settle down. Settling down over there will show that there is formation of precipitate. So it is over here precipitation. So this was the first one. The second one was gas evolved. Third one is precipitate. So precipitation. Precipitate. So precipitate is going to be formed. Now, for example, over here will be CuSO4 plus NaOH is going to give me CuOH twice plus Na2SO4. So, Na2SO4. Now you can see here CuH twice is an insoluble kind of hydroxide. Hence we show it as a down arrow. The down arrow over here, here you can show it as the oxygen with the up arrow, this is gas. Whereas here you are doing a down arrow showing that it is going to be a precipitate that with insoluble nature of that thing is indicated by arrow downwards. So arrow downwards is going to show that it is going to be a precipitate. The last kind of uh, indicator over there will be the production or absorption or evolution of heat. So heat will either be given out or it will be taken in. Like for example, if I take N2 plus 3H2 is going to give me something like 2NH3 plus heat. So it is a reaction in which heat is going to be given out by the reaction. Nitrogen and hydrogen when they combine together at a pressure, they are going to form ammonia and a lot of heat is given out. That kind of a heat given out over there is a, so heat given out it is exothermic and heat taken in is endothermic. It is very easy to remember. Endo, yane entry. Endo, enter. So heat entering inside endothermic. Exo, yane exit. Okay, bar. So exothermic. Bar jana. So exothermic means heat is given out. So when heat is given out, exothermic. Heat is taken in, it is endothermic. So heat wise, there could be two kinds of reaction taking place or indication given out by the chemist chemical reaction that if the heat is given out, then it is going to be a exothermic reaction. And if the heat is taken in, then it's an endothermic reaction. So instead of plus over here, if it is a minus triangle, the heat is the triangle over there. So if it is minus triangle means it is taken in, that means it is endothermic and the plus heat means it is exothermic. So this is how the <coughs> characteristics or indications 
are accompanied with a chemical reaction. So, in chemical reactions, uh, indicators are these ones. So, it was first one, color change. Second one being a gas evolved. Third one, there is a precipitate formed. Or finally, the heat is given out or taken in. That was about the different kinds of the indicators of the chemical reaction. Now, we come to what are the different types of chemical reactions. So, now we come to types of chemical reactions. <clears throat> now, the types of chemical reactions are basically there are four in nature. There are four types of uh, the ones. So, the four ones will be direct combination or decomposition, displacement or double decomposition. So, these are the four main basic kind of the chemical reactions or types of chemical reactions. So, let us see the different kinds of the chemical reactions one by one. So, the first one, what we see is the direct combination also called as synthesis okay direct combination or synthesis reaction direct combination is also called a synthesis reaction and it is a chemical reaction in which two elements or compounds combine to form one element or compound of course it can form one element but it will be formed into one compound so it could be that element A plus element B giving me element compound AB. Okay. Element A plus element B giving me a compound AB. So when A plus B giving me AB is the kind of reaction which is there, then such a reaction is called as direct combination or synthesis reaction. Now this kind of reaction can be of three different nature. The first one could be that this A is an element, B is also an element. For example, we have over here C plus O2 giving me, this is going to be a compound. So it will be CO2. So C plus O2 giving me CO2 is one kind. Another one could be there is a compound. Another is an element giving me a compound. For example, it is CO that is carbon monoxide plus oxygen giving me CO2. Okay. So if it is this way, then two molecules and a compound, it's a compound now, a compound with an element combining to form a combined element. The compound, a new compound that is carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide plus oxygen giving me carbon dioxide. It could also be a compound with another compound giving me another compound. So two small compounds combining to give me another compound like CO2 plus H2O giving me H2CO3. You can see this plus this is this, this plus this is this, this plus this is this. So what happened? It is just A plus B equal to AB. But it could be two elements forming a compound or two compound, one compound, one element forming a compound or two compounds forming a compound. So this way it can be segregated in this particular manner that it could be either formed out of two elements or one element, one compound or two compounds. Now, the synthesis reaction has got a very, very important role in the formation of acids and bases. It is seen that it is because of the synthesis reaction or direct combination reaction that non-metals react with oxygen to form acidic oxides which on reacting with acid with water form an acid okay we'll take some examples of this thing
So first thing over here is non-metal plus oxygen. So let's take C or we'll take uh, S plus O2 giving me SO2. Okay, that's the first condition. Now what happens? This SO2, so this is nothing but acidic oxide. Now, acidic oxide plus water gives me acid. So SO2 plus H2O gives me H2SO3, sulfurous acid. Got it? So you can see that SO2, SO2, direct combination reaction. SO2, H2O, H2SO3, again direct combination reaction. So it is by direct combination reaction that a acid is being formed from a non-metal. Non-metal reacts with oxygen to give you acidic oxides. Non-metals react with oxygen to give you acidic oxide. Another example could be carbon. Carbon plus oxygen give you carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide plus water give you carbonic acid. Another could be phosphorus. Phosphorus plus oxygen give you phosphorus pentoxide. And phosphorus pentoxide plus water will give you phosphoric acid. The equations are there in the next book. You can read that thing. So, this way you can have the formation of sulfurous acid. Even uh, carbonic acid, phosphorus as phosphoric acid, and so on. Okay, so that is direct combination to formation of acid. Same way, if we don't take metals, but non metals but we take metals, let's take this condition. If I take a metal, if I take a metal and react with the oxygen. It is going to give me basic oxide like Na plus O2 gives me Na2O. Okay, so it is going to be like this Na plus O2 gives me 2 Na2O. The metal plus oxygen give me basic oxides. Similarly, basic oxide. Plus water will give me a base. Basic oxide Na2O plus water H2O giving me NaOH. Okay. Got this thing. So it will be 2 NaOH. So you can see over here that similar to the acids. In the acid what used to happen? Not metal plus oxygen will give me acidic oxide. Acidic oxide plus water give me acid. Similarly. Metals with oxygen give me basic oxides. Metal plus oxygen give me basic oxide. Na, Na plus O2 give me Na2O2. Na2O. Basic oxide Na2O plus H2O gives me NaOx which is nothing but base. So you can see that you are able to get such kind of reactions in direct combination or synthesis reactions. So in this, there are very very important kind of reactions in direct combination or synthesis reaction. Another examples over here are the formation of certain salts. There are many salts which are going to be formed by just addition of a metal and non-metal. See what is a salt? Just a combination of metal and non-metal. It is like aluminum, chlorine, aluminum, chloride, iron, chlorine, iron, chloride. Okay, it's something like that. Iron, sulfur, and uh, uh, ferrous sulfate. Okay, so a ferrous sulfide. So you are going to get such kind of combination reactions for formation of salts. So there will be a combination reaction wherein you will be having on one side the metal plus non-metal giving me a salt. Okay, metal plus non-metal giving me a salt. For example, Al plus Cl2 giving me, this will be 2Al plus 3Cl plus giving me 2AlCl3. Uh, okay, 
this is a soluble one we'll take an example of insoluble one which is fe plus s giving me fes this is insoluble kind of a salt so you can see it is not necessary that you can make only soluble kind of salts by this method you can have even insoluble salts made by this method so whether it's a soluble or insoluble basic thing is that a plus b is equal to ab so iron plus sulfur ionic uh, iron sulfide <coughs> aluminum plus chlorine aluminum chloride so this is how you are having the formation of salts or preparation of salts by direct combination or synthesis reaction examples over here aluminum plus chlorine aluminum chloride iron plus chlorine iron chloride iron plus sulfur iron uh, uh, iron sulfide zinc plus sulfur zinc sulfide lead plus sulfur lead sulfide so these are the examples for the direct combination reaction to give you the salts by this method apart from that there are certain kind of the direct combination synthesis reaction which is very commonly seen the first example over here is hydrogen burns in air to give water very easy hydrogen plus oxygen gives you water so we can see from the textbook itself we have got over here certain examples so we'll quickly go through that also first one is 2h2 plus o2 giving me 2h2o direct combination the very common reaction burning of hydrogen in in air gives you water second is manufacturing of ammonia wherein nitrogen is reacted with hydrogen to give you ammonia so it is n2 plus h2 3h2 giving me 3 sorry 2nh3 nitrogen plus oxygen giving me ammonia that is another reaction here the conditions are that they will be taking place only when the temperature is between 450 to 500 degrees celsius and the pressure is between 200 to 900 atmospheric pressure so here the temperature and pressure play a very important role when it is taking place so it's a and so it's a reversible reaction that means it can be agar wo pressure ya wo kam kar diya to ye ammonia can decompose to nitrogen hydrogen once again the next is preparation of sulfuric acid so we can see sul so3 plus h2o that is tri so uh, sulfur trioxide plus water is going to give me h2so4 so that's the formation over here that tri sulfur trioxide in water will give you h2so4 similarly pressure preparation of hydrogen chloride gas the hydrogen chloride gas is h2 plus cl2 giving me hcl ammonium chloride ammonia plus hcl that is over here this is important so write down nh3 plus hcl will give me nh4cl this is again ammonia plus hcl giving me ammonium chloride so you can see ammonium chloride is formed by combination of vapors of ammonia with hydrogen chloride so ammonia with hydrogen chloride is going to give you ammonia gas ammonium chloride gas formation of magnesium carbonate MgO plus CO2 giving me MgCO3 magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide giving me magnesium carbonate that is basic oxide used for magnesium oxide reacts with carbon dioxide to give metal carbonate calcium oxide reacts with carbon dioxide to give you calcium carbonate CaO plus CO2 giving me CaCO3 another combination could be calcium plus nitrogen calcium nitride magnesium plus nitrogen magnesium nitride and aluminum plus nitrogen aluminum nitride metal nitride plus warm water will be metallic oxide plus ammonia and nitride are used for preparation of ammonia so this is certain things you can always remember this way that whenever i want to want uh, produce ammonia what i'm going to use is any metal nitride any metal nitride with warm water okay metal nitride aln plus uh, warm water h2o which is going to give you ammonia so this is just for your information not to remember as such not to learn as such so we see that metals plus nitrides are going to give me nitrogen is going to give me metallic nitride so this was the form the different kinds of synthesis or direct combination reaction